بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام خاتم النبي وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته yes welcome to another episode of building bridges between the faiths myself Rafi Hassan and ITV uh, yeah we are going quite far with this uh, uh, big series we are doing you know the prophets in the Quran and in the Bible. Well, you know, this program is to get us talking and building the bridges of understanding. And we uh, have the approach, which is the Islamic approach, that we are all the children of Adam. Uh, you know, this is the tree of humanity and the different nations, the tribes, the different branches. The Abrahamic branch, uh, Muslims, Jews and Christians are Abrahamic family. But if we belong to any of the other tribes in Africa, or South America, wherever, Europe, wherever, Islam says that humanity is one family and Islam spells I shall love all mankind. So that's how our approach is here. It is to build the bridges of understanding. So yes, we're doing prophets in the Quran and Bible. And for those that are newly joining us, remember this is going to the text. We are giving the verses from the Quran and verses in the Bible about those prophets. Now, as you can see, we've, uh, we've done the first one to 14. If you remember, we, as I said, we've gone quite far. We're coming actually to the tail end of this big series. I will let you know how many episodes it went into. Uh, we finished uh, 20 last week, Jonah, peace be upon him, the Prophet Yunus alayhi salam in the whale story. Now we're doing Dhul Kifl, who is known as uh, uh, Ezekiel, and uh, the, we're also going to combine him with Uzair, uh, who is known as Ezra, Uzair alayhi salam, who is known as Ezra, peace be upon him. Yeah, so the Prophet, we, we're going to do two of them together because they're not much information. We did say some of them are major prophets. Some prophets we went into more than one, two, three, four series episodes we went into. But this one, Dhul uh, Qifal, who is thought to be is a key, peace be upon you. So I put a question mark. And Uzair, alayhi salam, who is, you know, definitely known as Ezra in the Bible. Now, as you know, the difference is coming about, why is it that some of them we don't know, like in this case, who is Dhul Kifl? The Quran uses the word Dhul Kifl. But uh, because it's, very, it's a very minor prophet, there's not much details to, to bring more. You know, if there was more details, we could put the pieces more together to say exactly who it is. So there was very few verses about these prophets in the Quran. In fact, normally I start with the Bible verses, but uh, here we're going to start with the Quran verses because the Quran has got very few verses uh, of these prophets. And although we know prophets were sent to all the nations and all the tribes, but only 25 prophets were mentioned by name in the Quran. So there is a consensus that Dhul Kifl is, is a kill, alayhi salam. If we look at, uh, you know, when we say that historians believe that Dhul Kifl is, peace be upon him, is the Israelite prophet Ezekiel, peace be upon him. In Arabic, he is known as Hazkiel, so, uh, or Hazkiel, right? So, the, 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 so this prophet, who is Ezekiel, peace be upon him, he is accepted as a prophet, but it's generally thought that the Quran mentions the word Dhul Kifl. Now, just to re re recap our memory about prophets, because we did this at the beginning of the series on, on prophets in the Quran and Bible. But we're refreshing our memory as to why some prophets are major, some are minor, some because of translations, the names are not the same. And we have to like to make sure it's like, for instance, Jethro, peace be upon him. Remember, we did Shu'ib alayhi salam. And we said because there was more information, the, the pointers point to, uh, you know, uh, that Jethro is, peace be upon him, was Shu'ib alayhi salam. But here, it's sometimes because there's not many verses, you cannot pinpoint it, but you can sort of take a guesstimate or say that it is generally thought to be so uh, from historical analysis. Because remember, we're working only from Quranic text here and biblical text. But when you go into the, the traditional and historical text, it is pointing to Ezekiel, peace be upon him. Now, look at what the Quran says in chapter 43, verse 6. But how many were the prophets we sent amongst the people of old or in the past? How many prophets didn't Allah send 
uh, you know, to, in the past, from the time of Adam. Well, the Islamic tradition says 124,000. So we're just sort of recapping to say oh, so many, but out of those 124,000 prophets, only 25 are mentioned in the Quran by name. And then in chapter 4, verse 164, Anisa is chapter 4 of the Quran, women, verse 164 says, of some messengers, we have already told you the story of others we have not. And to Moses, Allah spoke directly. So here is a verse of the Quran, which is clearly telling us that uh, some of the prophets were told, you know, in the past, out of the 125,000, and some, uh, God Almighty did not mention, because again, if you, you'll have to go to the uh, first uh, two episodes of this series to understand why this is so. I'm just recapping, because you say at the end of the day, you know, from here to Johannesburg, we gave that example, you don't need to know on a map. They don't give you every side road, every side from the freeway, isn't it? They just give you the main turns. And that's what the Quran is doing. The Quran is tracing back from the time of Adam. It's giving you the main, from the national highway, the main R1, R2, R3, the side routes, not the smaller routes, you know. So therefore the small minor prophets are not mentioned in detail. That's the, the rationale here, because it's still, you can still trace it back. You know, all these prophets to the prophet Adam, peace be upon him. Now, as I said, that the historians believe that Zulkifl, peace be upon him, is the Israelite prophet Ezekiel, who is mentioned in the Quran. Now, let's go to the Quran. There's only two or three verses in the Quran talking about uh, 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 Zulkifl. Now, let's take the one here. Uh, or let me, let's use one more uh, uh, verse about prophets in general. In chapter 11, verse 120 of the Quran, it is mentioned, all that we relate to you of the stories of the messengers, of the stories of the prophets of the past, with it we make firm your heart, in them there comes to you the truth as well as a message of remembrance to those who believe. So here again, I was just mentioning now earlier on why this is so, that Allah just wants us to remember the main prophets, there is a, a, to show you the link you know, in the chain of the main artery, of the main root from Adam, you know, to Noah, Abraham, and all the Israelite prophets down to Moses, Jesus, and the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We got the main line and we've got the small, uh, you know, side our uh, roots out of there. That's all we need to get the big story. And that's why Allah says, we are telling you the stories of these prophets so that your heart must be at ease because they used to come and ask the Prophet Sallam, the Jews and the Christians about certain, certain prophets of the past and incidents. Like they used to came to ask me about the Ashab al -Kaf, the boys in the cave. They asked him about Dhal Karnain, you know, uh, and, and all the, and Yajuj and Majuj. They used to come and ask him questions which are in the Bible you know, the sleepers in the cave. And they used to ask him about previous prophets as well. And that's why the revelation came. So the truth, when the Quran was revealed, no, the Prophet was not there. The Prophet, peace be upon him, couldn't read and write. So people say he copied from the Bible, right? There's some allegations, wrong allegations. How can it be possible when there are facts mentioned about prophets which are not in the Bible? So, I mean, and there are prophets even mentioned in the Quran, which are not even mentioned in the Bible. So, I mean, are you going to copy something that's not there? So Allah is saying, we are, we're telling you the stories of some of the prophets, and this is the truth. It's from God. God is the truth. And why Allah tells you, he wants us to remember these prophets. These prophets are landmarks. They are landmarks. These 25 prophets help us to trace the, the, the message of the messengers, an unbroken change of messengership and message can be traced from the beginning of creation, from Adam, peace be upon him, down through the ages to the last prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And that's what, how beautiful this comparative religion is. And that's how the Quran actually is looking at it. And he wants us to remember the main landmarks, you know, uh, on the road uh, to find uh, the truth and to find how God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the beginning of creation was unfolding himself and, re and revealing things and sending prophets to guide mankind. So now here's the one or two verses. As I said, we're starting with the Quran first because the, the Quran has very few verses uh, about this. So in chapter 21, verse 85 and 86, it is stated, and remember Ismail and Idris who is Enoch and Zulkifl, 
all men of constancy and patience, we admitted them to our mercy for the way of the righteous ones. So here's the first verse where the Quran mentions about Dhul Kifl. Uh, and as I said, Dhul Kifl is understood, especially when you go to uh, historical sources like Ibn Kathir in Qasas al-Anbiya. He, he was a great historian in the early period of Islam. They you know, went through other literature of the, the, the what we call the Israelia literature of the Jews and the Christians, their history, and compared it to the Islamic history and what the Prophet, peace be upon him, said. And they attributed uh, Dhul Kifl to be Izakil, peace be upon him. And so the Quran is using, this is the first verse about Dhul Kifl. There's only two or three verses about him in the Quran. But it says that Ismail and Idris and Dhul Kifl were all men of constancy and patience and we admitted them to our mercy. And then here's the, the next verse. In chapter 38 of the Quran, verses 48 and 49, and commemorate, right? Ismail and El Elisha and Dhul Kifl, each one of them was of the company of the good. Now in green, you see, waskuru Ismaila, right? While Yasha'a, now Allah says, and remember. Waskuru means remember. It says commemorate them, remember them. Imagine there were so many, some of them a thousand years before the Prophet but still, you know, the Prophet is told we must remember them. So we must remember them, commemorate them, and each one is in the company of the good. So here Dhul Kifl mentioned, the previous verse, he was mentioned with uh, uh, Enoch, right? Ismail and Enoch, Idris. Here he's mentioned Ismail and El Elisha, right? So, uh, then again, it carries on. This is a message as a reminder. Haza, right? Uh, Haza zikra. So this is a dhikr. This is a reminder. You know, a, 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 it is a, 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 an example, is a lesson. And verily, for the righteous, is a beautiful place of final return. Because they were righteous prophets. So the Quran is saying two things about, uh, you know, Ismail uh, and Elisha and Enoch, you know, Idris, peace and all the prophets, that they were righteous prophets. Again, this is something that once, you know, this, as we're coming towards the end of the series, one thing that's coming strong right from the beginning when you're talking from Adam and, you know, and Noah and all the prophets, that the prophets are righteous servants of God Almighty. Unlike the Bible, this is one major difference we picked up, is that the Bible has attributed, has mentioned a lot of wrongdoings, uh, against the commandments of God uh, by the prophets. And, and this is not so in the Quran. The Quran always is mentioning the prophets as righteous people. So this is a message as a reminder, and they were righteous people, and they will be in a beautiful place of return, which means when they go back and they pass on into the hereafter, they'll be in heaven. So yes, stay tuned. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, so we, these are the just two verses. Can you believe it? There's only two verses in the entire Quran about Udhul Kifl, you know, and who, as I said, uh, his, historians, Islamic scholars have uh, uh, said it's equal to, uh, you know, is, uh, is a kill, peace be upon him. So these are the only two verses. Uh, now, this, let's go a bit more into the Bible now. So that's all the Quran has to say about Dhul Kifl, right? It just says it associates him, you know, to be the prophet after Ismail and Elisha and Ismail and Enoch, you know, Idris, and that they were righteous people. Now, one thing I want to, let's place him in, in biblical times. Let's place him uh, on the historical timeline of prophets. And I must thank the viewers. Many of you are sending a lot of questions. And I'm, I thank you for following uh, you know, the series and very interested in it. And uh, inshallah, in the, in the last segment, we'll give you our details where you can send us your comments and you can even add, you know, and, and if you want us to add a few things, uh, like uh, one of the brothers, Michael, I want to acknowledge him. Uh, he's uh, here in Durban somewhere in Newlands East and, and he was, you know, following the series carefully and telling us about, 
you know, the prophets, and he wanted to know also these timelines. He was very interested in how many thousand years, you know, the prophets were between each one of them and from Adam. Then he wanted to know the age of creation. So these are some of the questions that were coming. Unfortunately, because of the, the, the big, uh, so much of uh, prophets we have to do and the big series we are doing, this big series on prophets, we, will, we were not taking questions, we tried to answer it in between, you know, like how I'm doing now. And he was wanting to know the age of the earth in relation to the prophets. And, and so, you know, these are some interesting things. Now, let's place the prophet Isaac Hill, peace be upon him. He was uh, after the destruction of the temple in 586 BC. Now, if you recall when we did Solomon, peace be upon him, and we did the children of Israel, remember the Israelites, we said that, that uh, you know, uh, uh, David, peace be upon him, Dawud Salam wanted to build this temple, but it was Solomon who finally built it, his son, Suleiman Salam, but it was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar, and he took the, uh, the, the Israelites back into captivity, into Babylon. Now that is the period. Isaac Hill, peace be upon him, Dhul Kifl was the prophet with the Israelites who was taken to Babylon. Do you understand? He was uh, there now, he, he was born in Jerusalem, but he was one of those that was taken with all the Israelites in captivity into Babylon. So that's the period after the temple was destroyed. And then what one of his jobs, functions was that he was holding out to them the promise of return to their homeland again and the restoration of the temple and of the throne of David. So, so one of his jobs that he was doing, you know, God Almighty Allah sent him, he was sort of giving them hope because now they are, they are back in captivity. Remember the story of the Israelites. They were in captivity and bondage in Egypt. You know the story. And, and uh, God Almighty Allah sent Moses, peace be upon him, to, uh, to liberate them, you know, across the Red Sea and brought them, you know, finally. He never entered the land of Canaan, the promised land, so to say, uh, you know. So what you find here, is uh, now but the temple is destroyed because they were disobeying God Almighty. God brought them to the promised land, but he threw them out of the promised land because of their wrongdoings. And, and the temple was destroyed, you know. Uh, and, and now uh, the prophet Isaac, peace be upon him, you know, he's trying to tell them, don't give up hope. He was like prophesizing because he's a prophet. And what is the job? A job of a prophet is to, to come, counsel his people, give hope to the people, correct the people, and getting revelation from God Almighty Allah SWT. And he was getting a lot of revelations and predictions. And he was telling them, don't worry, the temple is going to be rebuilt. God is telling me, we will go back and we will rebuild the temple. So that's the message, essential, one of the essential messages that Isaac Hill was giving them. So there was a hope there, because again, now they're crying again. You know the big song, by the rivers of Babylon. They were crying now. They say, oh, now God abandoned us. We, yes, we did wrong. And then Moses abandoned us, was angry. Now God is angry. But then, uh, because they were doing the wrong things. But Isaac Hill was trying to give them hope. He said, no, don't worry. Ask for forgiveness of God. Uh, change your ways. And that's what he was trying to tell them. And God is promising me that if you do change your ways, I will send you back. I'll get you back into uh, uh, Jerusalem. Uh, and I will get you even to build the temple again. Now, there were other Israelite prophets at the time in Babylon, and that one is Ezra, peace be upon him, who is Uzair alayhi salam, who we're going to do in this, uh, you know, in the next segment. We're going to do it in this uh, episode. And there is another prophet called the prophet Nehemiah, peace be upon him. Now, we must keep these two. Um, so this, uh, these prophets, there were also some other prophets, at the time they, that because it was a, it was a, about 70 to 80 years almost that they were in exile now when when things started to change the babylonian king nebuchadnezzar was in charge but then persia remember the whole old uh, superpowers of the time persia the persian empire the roman empire the babylonian empire these were all big superpowers and now the persian empire sort of was having an influence over babylon and during this period, it is when the Persians were ruling, the prophet uh, Isaac Hill and the prophet Ezra, you know, were getting, uh, were, were made friends with the Persian emperors and what have you to give, get them to go back from Babylon uh, to Jerusalem. Now, I want to just show you this map again. We did show this map earlier on. This is an old map of the, what we call today the Middle East. 
Now, uh, if you look at the middle there, it's Babylonia, you know, right in the center of the, uh, of, of the screen. On the left, there's Egypt there. You can see, and below Babylonia, you can see Arabia there. So you can see there's Arabia, there's Babylon. Now, if you look uh, on the left, you see, you see Jerusalem. Below Babylon, you see Gaza. There's Jerusalem. That is the thin strip by Gaza there. That is the land of Canaan. You see, that's the sort of promised land which they were taken to. I don't know if you can uh, see the cursor on the screen. And that's the area here where they were. So what happened is uh, the, the, the Babylonian king took them from here, destroyed them, took them all the way to Babylon. You see the arrow? That's Iraq, that's area, but there he took them to Babylon. Now when they had, and there's a shortcut here, can you see? For them to go back to Jerusalem, there is a shortcut here, you cross across Arabia. That's why there was always this cross traveling between Arabia, Babylon, uh, Jerusalem, and Egypt. Can you see? There, there was these three, Egypt, these are all important areas between Egypt, this Israel, you know, the Jerusalem, land of Canaan, uh, Arabia, Babylon, these were the, the, the caravan routes. And these countries uh, were always crisscrossing each other. So I want you to keep this point in mind. So they are now in Babylon as captivity. And, uh, and the prophet uh, Isaac Hill is, is, you know, uh, counseling them, giving them hope, and, and also chastising them also, you know, why you all did these wrong things? Why you all didn't follow the law? Now you see what happened now. We are punished now. Can you see? We, are, we, we have been punished. So, uh, but God says if you ask for forgiveness and you amend your ways, uh, he will, uh, you know, uh, he's giving us the promise that he will take us back. Now I want to go and, and to recall more about Isaac Hill. We're not going to do much because we still got to do the prophet Ezra. You know, peace be upon him, Uzair alayhi salam. Now, if you recall, we did the series on Hajj in the Bible, if you recall. And the prophet Isaac Kiel was very prominent. We were quoting from him about Hajj and the Kaaba, which means now why I showed you this map. Because it means this prophet Isaac Kiel went to Arabia. Can you see now how, why I showed you this? There's Babylon. You see how near Arabia is, Mecca is. From there, it's easy to get to Mecca. And they were going to Mecca. The, and that's, they, they used to go for the Hajj there because they were the children of Abraham. And it is Abraham who built the house and Abraham told all his descendants to go for Hajj in Arabia. They were coming to Arabia, to the Kaaba for Hajj. And that's what Ezekiel was doing. You know, although he came from Jerusalem, but they, they you know, look at in the book of Ezekiel chapter 41 verse 2. It's a bit small, the writing. And he was measuring, I'm not going to read the whole verse, right? But if you go look at it in chapter 41, verse 2, 3, and 4, Isaac Kiel, peace be upon, was measuring the Kaaba. You know, it, is, it was five cubits on this side, and it was, you know, five cubits on the other side, and the 20 cubits on the length and breadth. He was actually measuring the, the, the Kaaba is a cube structure. We are, this is what the prophet Isaac Hill, who was in Babylon in captivity, but he, he came here to Mecca, you know, to do the Hajj because obeying his great, great grandfather, Abraham, peace be upon him. Because uh, Isaac Hill is a descendant of Abraham through Isaac, peace be upon him. Now here's another one, uh, verse, uh, you can, uh, don't worry about the one in the Quran, chapter 2, verse 125, which is talking about when we go for Hajj, we go around, you know, we do a tawaf circumambulating around the Kaaba anticlockwise. In the book of Isaac, chapter 44, verse 5, and look what he is saying in red there. And the Lord said to me, Son of man, mark well and behold with thine eyes and hear with thine ears all that I say to thee concerning all the ordinances of the house of the Lord and all the laws thereof. And look at it in green. And mark well the entering in of the house with every going forth of the sanctuary. When you're going around, when you're, circum when you're going in a circle, around the house. Now, who, you tell me, is there any place in Jerusalem where they go around a place of worship in Jerusalem? There never was. Even in the Temple of Solomon, they were, at, they were not going around a structure. Here, the, it is very clear. Isaac Hill is showing you how they were marking. Well, those who go for pilgrimage, you know, when they enter the house, they got to start at the starting point at the, at the Black Stone, you know, at the Hajar Aswad, and then they go around. And here, Isaac Hill, God is saying, mark well where you're starting. Where's your starting point when you start your tawaf? You got to go seven times around. Look how beautiful they're showing the merger. This prophet Isaac Hill 
Now here's a, here's a picture of it, you know, I, I gave you a picture of how we go seven times around. Now you can see why he was told Mark well, because there's it at the beginning here, you know, the starting point of the end, you go seven times around the Kaaba. That's exactly what the prophet Ezekiel was told by God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he came here to the same place, showing you the continuity of prophets and how they all did the same thing, going around the Kaaba, making the Hajj, obeying the commandments of God and following the footsteps of Abraham. Abraham, their great grandfather, peace be So, yes, keep it locked on. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So we're talking about the Prophet Isaac Hill, peace be upon him, whom uh, uh, Muslim scholars uh, say is the Dhul Kifl, alayhi salam, peace be upon him, mentioned in the Quran. Now we show you about, you know, one of his first functions was to give hope, uh, firstly to, to reprimand the, the Israelites for the wrongs they were doing, and secondly to tell them to repent and then give them the hope uh, uh, the message that uh, if they repent and they amend the ways, they'll be taken back to Jerusalem and, and rebuild the temple. But I'm also showing that Ezekiel in the book of, this is in the book of Ezekiel, who went to do the Hajj. And, and he also, the, he talks about the Zamzam. Another proof that he went there to the Kaaba is in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 47, verse 1. Afterwards, he brought me again to the door of the house and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house, from under the threshold of the house eastwards for the forefront of the house stood towards the east and the waters came from under from the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Now look at the, the description here. I want to, you know, I want the people to there is no uh, room for doubt what he's talking about, that he's talking about Mecca and the Kaaba and the well of Zamzam. Because there is no well like this in any way in Jerusalem at the temple of Solomon that was there. Because some of the uh, scholars want to say it's the temple, the Judaic Christian scholars is, is talking about the temple of Solomon. No, this is exactly, now I want to prove it to you. Here's a picture, those of you uh, who didn't go there, uh, and even Muslims who didn't go there, there's the Kaaba. Well, this is during pilgrimage time. Can you see the door of the Kaaba in front of you? I'm going to show it to you. There, you know, this is the door of the Kaaba. Here, there's it. You can see the, my, my cursor, right, in black there. And there's the door of the Kaaba. And you see that to the right, this is the right of the Kaaba. That is the left-hand side. To the right side of the Kaaba, underneath, is you go down the steps, is the well of Zamzam. Can you see this? Look at the description. Exactly what Isaac Hill is saying. He says, when I went around, I came to the front again, and to the right of the door of the Kaaba, was I, under, from underneath, from underneath came the well of Zamzam. And you have to go down. Those you go for, uh, you know, for Umrah, when they want to go to the well, you see that the Saudis made this, look at this area here. It steps going down, and now it's closed because of the crowds. But we were fortunate, alhamdulillah, I went in the 80s, uh, and, and I managed, we went exactly, it was like this, and we went right at the bottom where the well was. Now look at the description exactly as it was. And so that, to end about Dhul Kifl, alayhi salam, the prophet Isaac, peace be upon him, he was a righteous man. According to the Bible, as well as the Islamic tradition, he used to fast regularly almost every day. He used to keep Virgil every night in prayer, the Tahajid. He used to pray to God late, you know, when everyone is sleeping, get up and pray. He worshiped God alone, the one true God, which the Israelites called the Sama Israeli, the one true God, you know, he never became angry. Uh, you know, therefore, Zul Kifl in the Quran is admitted into God's mercy due to his righteousness. And remember, we gave you that verse. And remember, Ismail, Idris, Enoch, and Zul Kifl, men of constancy and patience, we admitted them to our mercy for their way of the righteous ones. The Quran tells with this. So, Alhamdulillah, you know, as I said, Zul Kifl, uh, uh, alayhi salam, uh, you know, uh, is a kill, peace be upon him. Not much uh, in, uh, in, the, in the Bible, there's a whole book of Isaac kill actually. So a lot of uh, verses in the Bible about Isaac kill. Now let's now move ahead because we're now in the middle and we need to cover the prophet Uzair alayhi salam, who is called Ezra, peace be upon him in the Bible. Now this again is a, is a very uh, 
There's a little bit more verses, but not as much again, uh, you know, in the Bible. There's a book of Ezra in the Bible, which lots, lots more information. Uh, you mean Ezekiel, peace be upon him, two verses in the whole Quran, only two verses. But there's a whole book of Ezekiel, which is almost over 40 chapters, uh, you know, chapter one, chapter 47 chapters, which is quite a, a lot of information. So with Uzair alayhi salam, there's only a few verses about Uzair alayhi salam. In fact, I think Uzair alayhi salam, if I recall, is only one verse in the whole Quran. Can you believe it mentioning his name, uh, the prophet Ezra? Uh, um, now the, then, and here's it in chapter 9 verse 30. There's only one place by name he is mentioned. The Jews call Uzair a son of Allah and the Christians call Christ the son of Allah. That is a saying from their mouths. In this they but imitate what the unbelievers of old used to say. Now the verse carries on. Now what, what, what is being said here is that wrongly, the God has got no sons. God is beyond a human concept. You know, uh, the prophet Job, we remember when we did Job, uh, what did he say? Uh, he said that, uh, you know, uh, God is not a man. Uh, you know, you cannot equate God with man. Right in the book of Job 25, even the book of Numbers said God is, is not a man. You cannot, and even the, the, the commandments, the first and second commandments talk about there's no likeness of God that is in the heavens, in the earth, or anywhere under the sea. The God has got no anthropomorphic concept. So how can you say God has got a son? Now, I will explain this term, and, and, and this is what the, that's the only time that Allah used the, the name of Uzair alayhi salam, uh, who is, uh, you know, uh, mentioned only once there, Ezra, peace be upon him, uh, is to say that they used to, they, now why they used to call him son of God uh, is, is a, it's because they were Israelites. And this is another topic we will do later on. And we did it in, in, in you know, about two years ago when we did Christian beliefs. And uh, when you, you know, lock on to the next segment, in the last segment, we will give you our details where you can get those past episodes, where it is more a figure of speech, you know, that uh, to say a son of God means uh, you are a prophet of God. It's a figure of speech or you are a a believer in God, or you are a good follower of God, so you call him the son of God. Doesn't mean literally the son. So the son of God would mean one who's obeying God. It's a figure of speech. So more than anything else, and, and then unfortunately, some of the people, uh, the, the, you know, took the, the Bani Israel, took it literally to mean son of God, as if in a part of the divinity. Now, now let's talk about Ezra now. Since, uh, who's Uzair al -Saram? since Evra's Ezra's effort did much to give Jewish religion the form that was to characterize it for centuries after. Ezra has, with some justice, been called the father of Judaism. Now, you remember, they are in captivity now. Remember we said they are, Uzair is with Ezekiel, peace be, you know, they are one after the other. These are the prophets in exile, they in Babylon. Uh, as a kid's function, we told you, was to give them hope and a prophecy they will go back. Ezra's job, now, you know, they forgot everything. When they were banished, they, they didn't have the Torah. They were now in captivity. They were disrupted. The temple is destroyed. So their religious practices and all is gone. You get my point. So now the prophet Ezra, Uzair al-Islam's job was to slowly bring them back to their practices. You understand? He wants to bring them back to their religious rituals and the practice and the praying. And that's what was his main job. And that's why it is saying that he is the one, even the Torah, the Torah that was there, that was what was left, uh, you know, uh, in the time of the temple, the destruction, it was all burnt and destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. They didn't want no traces of any Jewish uh, or Israelite, uh, you know, religious books and their religion. It was an oppressive time. So they were destroying everything that was Jewish was destroyed. You get the point. Now, Ezra, God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, started him to, to, to revive the Torah because he is a prophet. So God was revealing it to him. They say, Ezra, they want him to know how come he's, re he's reading the Torah. He's starting to bring them back to the Torah because God was giving him the Torah by revelation again, just like how he revealed it to Moses, peace be upon him. Remember Jesus, peace be upon him. Also, he came 500 years after Moses, Peace be upon him. But remember, I mean, a thousand years after Moses, but Jesus also knew the Torah. 
Besides, he knew the Injil, the New Testament. Jesus was given by God the knowledge of the Old Testament. Because God is God. He's the same angel of revelation, the Holy Spirit, Gabriel, the angel of revelation, who revealed the books of revelation to Moses, gave the book of, uh, also revealed the Torah to Jesus, peace be upon him. And now that same God, using the same angel of revelation, is giving Ezra the Torah again. You get what I mean? A revelation again because it was destroyed. And so he's, he, was, he started to read it, you know, to them while they were in exile in Babylon. So his specific form of Jewish religious took after Babylonian exile. So important was he in the eyes of the people that later traditions regarded him as no less than a second Moses. Because he was bringing back the, 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 the Torah, the law that was given to Moses. And in fact, even the, the, the Persian government, you know, my truly they were under Persian rule. The Persian king now, they were the superpower. Ezra apparently had official status as a commissioner of the Persian government, and his title was Scribe of the Law of the God of Heaven. He was called, that was his title. So he was like the God scribe, so he's God's son. You know, he's a God's agent. These are terms that are used, and that's why it got construed to be son of God as a divinity, whereas he was just a prophet of God. How many times prophets of God were misgrewed to be part of the divinity? When they are, they are not part of the divinity of God, they are part of the divine mission of God. They are part of God's work. They are not part of God's divinity. And that's what actually happened here. So let's just refresh our memory. You remember when we did Solomon, uh, uh, the episode, look at how beautiful that first temple was. It was a really a magnificent structure. You recall when we did this episode, that is actually real gold that you're seeing there. Remember uh, uh, David, peace be upon him, Dawud salam, wanted to build a temple like no other in the world. He wanted to build something that was out of this world kind of thing, the best. And, and really that's what it was, but it was finally destroyed because of the wrongdoings of the Israelites. And the temple now, just to remind ourselves, was destroyed twice now. But now this was the first time it was destroyed in 586 by the uh, Nebuchadnezzar from Babylon. Then, then you know, they came back, the, uh, you know, and built it, which we're going to show you now. Remember, uh, they, they were in captivity, so they were slowly coming back. But after they rebuilt it with, with the prophet Uzair, alayhi salam, and Nehemiah, you know, these prophets in exile, it was destroyed again 70 years after Jesus, peace be upon him. So it only lasted for about 585 somewhat years because it was destroyed again the second time. And so Ezra was the second of the three key leaders to leave Babylon for the reconstruction of Jerusalem. So you remember they in Kev, let's go back to Uzair alayhi salam, Ezra, to the prophet Zulkifl alayhi salam, who is the prophet Ezekiel. Now they gone. Now here you're finding uh, the prophet Uzair alayhi salam and Nehemiah, peace be upon him, Ezra. There is a, the, the, the person who was responsible for the constructing of the temple is the person by the same of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel, according to the book of Ezra chapter 3, he, he was like the builder. Nehemiah built the walls around the second temple in the book of Nehemiah chapters one, and Ezra brought the religious, he was the, the teacher who brought back the Torah, the teachings of the Torah and the worship. So stay tuned, we'll be back for the last segment. Keep your pens ready, we'll give you our details. Welcome back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To the last segment of this uh, episode where we're talking about uh, the Prophet uh, Zulkifl, the Prophet Isaac, peace be upon him, uh, and the Prophet Uzair alayhi salam, who is known as Ezra, peace be upon him. So here we told them the three of them were appointed by God, uh, you know, uh, to do different parts, to rebuild. And there's the rebuilt, the second temple that was rebuilt by the, by the prophet Nehemiah, peace be upon him. Uh, and the, the, the other person was Zerubbabel. And then Ezra started 
them to, you know, started the whole worshipping and the prayer and the animal sacrifice and all the commandments, he started bringing it back again. And in Ezra chapter 10, verse 10 and 11, he commanded, uh, you, you know, you have been unfaithful. Now, one of the things Ezra did when they came back to Jerusalem, you know, in all this turmoil and in the expulsion and in, in them being killed and uh, others taken into captivity, those, uh, the Jews... The Israelites started to marry the other, uh, from other tribes, you know, the, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, you know, there were other types, tribes living there. Now, they, they were not supposed to be doing that according to the Mosaic law. And now the prophet Ezra, peace be upon him, is chastising them. He's stopping them from doing that. Listen what he's saying here. And he told them, you have been unfaithful. You have married foreign women, adding to Israel's guilt. And now honor the Lord, the God of your ancestors, and do what he wills. Separate yourselves from the peoples around you and from your foreign wives. So now uh, Ezra, peace be upon him, was telling them to, to, to leave the wives that they took. They only must marry from the Israelite tribes. So it's a tribal thing. Uh, this, was, this is actually from uh, the book of Deuteronomy. This is the Mosaic Law, chapter 7, verses 3 and 4. These marriages with people of other nations that worship false gods were forbidden in the law of Moses because they were, you know, the, the other tribes were worshipping Baal and worshipping, you know, statues and all these other things. So they were forbidden to do that. But, you know, now that they, they were destroyed, the temple was destroyed, they went astray again. Now Ezra was trying to bring them back. But also, you know, there's another point he said in this verse, separate yourselves from the peoples around you. So not only from your wives now that are not from the tribe of the Israelites, but you must separate yourself from the people around you. Now this is a, a something, another interesting thing where you'd find that throughout history, you find one of the qualities of the Israelites that's, that they are known for is that they are people who live alone or they are a people who sort of their, their family life is a, is a very secluded life. It's among themselves, you understand? So it is the people who are alone. So you have to separate themselves from the people around you. And this is one of the things that he, Ezra was commanding them to do. And then after that, the Ezra chapter 7 uh, verse 10 says, describes a shaping of the community in accordance with the Torah. Ezra's goal was to implement the Torah and his impeccable priestly and scribal credentials allowed him to remain the, the, you know, the model leader. So he actually brought them back. That is why he was like the father of Judah because they forgot everything and they, everything was taken and burnt and destroyed and he slowly was bringing them back to the law of Moses and the commandments and worshiping God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I, while we're ending, you know, another prophet that was uh, around at the time during a contemporary is the prophet Daniel alayhi salam, which Islam also recognizes him and uh, Daniel, peace be upon him. Now people, you know, those who study comparative religion know very much about the prophecies of Daniel alayhi salam. Uh, very strong prophecies. Now, Nehemiah's account begins in 445 BC, and this date is important because the prophet Daniel, peace be upon him, who was a contemporary of Ezra and Nehemiah, peace be upon him, wrote the 70 weeks of years prophecy in the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. Now, these are very strong prophecies, which we'll do later in future episodes, uh, you know, uh, the prophet Daniel is, uh, peace be upon him, is not mentioned by name in the Quran. Therefore, we're not, you know, we're only mentioning the prophets and doing in these episodes the prophets who are mentioned by name. So, so th therefore, we are not covering Daniel as a separate prophet, but we will cover him when it comes to, because what did he say? He based some prophecies on very specific date, which he started on the 15th of March, the 445 year BC. This date is crucial to the beginning of the prophecy as it starts with the prophetic timeline, which ends with the second coming of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Now I'm mentioning this because this happened during this time of Ezra 
and, and, and the Prophet Zulkifl alayhi salam, which is Ezekiel, peace be upon him, and Nahema. You get my point? And the, besides, uh, you know, Ezekiel, peace be upon him, predicting that, that they will go back to the Jerusalem and they will rebuild the temple, which happened. So which means he was a prophet. How, did, how could he have been so sure of this? But it happened. Now, the Daniel alayhi salam, he was predicting about the end times that uh, he's already leave alone the coming of Jesus. Jesus, peace be upon him, is still to come. He's still, he's still 400 years before Jesus to arrive. And he's not only talking about the arrival of Jesus, he's talking about the arrival of the second arrival of Jesus at the end times. So that's how far his prophecies were going, which is called the end time prophecies, which we also covered in our past episodes. Perhaps it's an important time for us to tell you now, you know, let's look at the bottom now. We did 21 and 22, but now we're going to do uh, the prophet Zechariah, alayhi salam. Zechariah's in the Bible. So that's the prophet we'll be doing next. And his son was Yahya, alayhi salam, who was John the Baptist. So let's, we will actually be doing that prophet next. But while we still got the time, before we, the time is running out on us, remember, here's our contact details. You call us on 031-507-5080, which, Alhamdulillah, we thank those that are in touch. You can send us a cell, a WhatsApp on 074-560-1786, 074-560-1786, with your comments, your questions, your queries, your requests. Remember, we've got a lot of free literature. We can share with you this, uh, this information we have. Uh, you know, we, go to our website www.ifri.com i-i-f-r-i.com two i's f for fat r for red i for islam.com and then uh, you have our email is info at ifri.com you can send us letters if you want to box 6036 phoenix 4068 here's the new time slots we want to thank itv with all the uh, you know difficulties they are going through. I think many of you have came across and seen what we, 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 we support and sympathize with what's going on with everyone at ITV and hope they can resolve the issues. Monday nights, it'll be 9.30 to 10.30. The first episodes always Wednesdays. It'll be now in the evening between, between 6 to 8 p.m. For the Muslims before Isha, it'll be between Maghrib, you know, it'll keep moving. So that's now, it's fixed. Uh, it's, it's going to be now for the while between uh, Maghreb and Isha. You keep an eye for that. It will be the, that will be the slot on a Wednesday and Friday evenings at 11 p.m. You can also get the details on itvnetworks.tv, www. Go to their website, click featured shows, go to spiritual shows, and then go to building bridges. We are also on YouTube, but some of the episodes, thanks to ITV IT, they have put many of our programs and uh, not all of them on YouTube. But if you want to have all the episodes, you must go on to, uh, you know, this one, www.ifri.com, our website, which gives you all of it. And um, what I want you to know is that we are offering courses, you know, and uh, you, uh, in these courses, we are offering three major courses you can do via distance learning, via the internet with us. You can learn the basics of Islam, how to perform salah, and, and you know, read Quran. These are for the basics, those who are newly embraced. Via correspondence, you can learn understanding Islam in a more you know, comprehensive manner. It's the second cause. And we're also doing causes in Dawah and comparative religion. So you contact us, go to our website again. Let me put our website on again, you know, www.ifri.com. And all the details are there, the application forms are there. And there are a lot of free literature on our website, free pamphlets, information to share with. So as I said, you know, let's get into it and, and let's share our knowledge. You know, very soon, uh, next week will be the Heritage Day. That will be the 24th of September is going to be Heritage Day. And uh, let us, uh, this is it's to show our rainbow nation. It's to show our rich heritage. We are living here as different races, as different religions, as different cultures. Uh, you know, let us show uh, on that day uh, how we can live together in our diversity, what they call unity in diversity. And I think it's very important for us, anybody who, uh, you know, we here at uh, where we are at, uh, at IFRI, at, at the Unit 8 Mosque in Phoenix, uh, in, in, in Phoenix, in Durban, Unit 8, at the uh, Alimia Masjid, the, the, the Unit 8 Mosque, we're going to be having an open day in the morning, right? Till, uh, because it's going to be on a Friday, the 24th is a Friday. You know, Friday we have our Friday prayers. So till about 11 o'clock, 
Uh, we've got an open day for the neighbors and public to come and visit us at the mosque, at the masjid. Or oh, It's an open day, let's get to know one another. We take you on a tour of the mosque. Uh, the, the Gurba Society here, where we are at the mosque, where Ifri's offices are, uh, they also, you know, will give you an explanation of, they do a lot of burial, the Muslim burials, uh, and they will also give you an explanation of how that's done. Let's get to know one another about our cultures. And here's an open day and share some refreshments and, and, and show uh, to the world, which really South Africa is one of the best examples of, uh, you know, uh, a rainbow nation. Yes, we may have had our ups and downs because of apartheid. We, we're battling with the divides. You know, apartheid put us into boxes. Uh, you know, Indian area, African area, colored area, European. They put us in boxes and they put us in physical areas. You know, from the time you're born, you go to an Indian school or an African school or a colored school or this school. They, they, were, they were putting it into our psyche, you know, and right to university level, believe it or not, you know. Uh, not only school, if you go to, there was a university for Africans, university for coloreds, university for Europeans, I mean, university for Indians. Now, can you believe that this is what it was called apartheid, separate development, uh, you know, based on racial lines. Here is the, uh, you know, this coming Friday, you know, the 24th, it, it is Heritage Day. Let us come out of our boxes, out of our areas, and really build the bridges. This is what building bridges is about, to show that we are one. Humanity is one. Uh, you know, so this is what we want to show. I will end with that slide. Till we meet again, Khuda Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.